Fox News host Glenn Beck made headlines last year by railing against President Obama, ACORN, and administration officials like Van Jones. Now Beck has zeroed in on a new target, who he says may be the most subversive yet. I just love my country, and I fear for it. Beck alleges that this person played a key role in a vast left-wing conspiracy responsible for the 2008 takeover of the federal government by non-Republicans. According to Beck, this citizen not only voted for Obama, but has eaten rice, staple food in communist China, and used Google, the most popular search engine among terrorists. Let me show you the big picture of what's happening here. The roots of the tree of radicalism and revolution. And we're seeing now how they're all intertwined. The, the same people keep popping up over and over again. It's pretty eye-opening. It is absolutely frightening what it looks like is coming our way. The Fox host contends that the plot stretches back more than 3,000 years, showing that the voter's name translated into Greek, then Aramaic, then back into English, then combined with the letters R, G, and L spells Nergal, the ancient Sumerian god who Beck says is the secret founder of the Democratic Party and the ACLU. Case closed. We know who you are. Beck has launched a nationwide campaign to have this voter stripped of citizenship, flogged, and deported to North Korea. His viewers have responded enthusiastically, staging rallies and public teabaggings across the country. They made Glenn Beck cry. Glenn Beck only cries when he's frightened for our country, or when he's sad, or when he's hungry. Jesus wrote the Constitution specifically to prevent people like this from taking over the country. Now look what's happening. International reaction to Beck's crusade has been muted, except in France, where he's known as Le Baby en Pleurant and celebrated as a brilliant postmodern tragic comic clown. After the break, a national study shows that the vast majority of tea parties in the U.S. are still hosted by little girls.